Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin I want you, let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe I'm not making this shit up, love. I'll put a fucking bullet in his head. Do you understand me? Yes. Go for it. Sorry, what? The bastard deserves it. Hi, I'm Corinna for the fan carpet and we are here at the Region Cinema in London for the premiere of A Kind of Kidnapping. Now this is a quite a little fun film where if you don't like politicians much or what they've been doing the last few years and this might be for you because this is really about a couple who are a bit desperate for some cash so how do you get some cash? Well, you kidnap a politician and hold him ransom. Right, so I'm now joined by Patrick. Now you play the, the politician in this movie. Now this is quite a fun role, isn't it? How, how did you come about to play this? Well, we, uh, Dan came up with an idea for a short film where it was an out-of-work actor. Uh, we really liked what he came up with and what the end product, and he worked on it over a few years and switched it to uh, a politician who maybe was slightly under the radar, uh, a Tory MP, obviously, uh, and it just seemed to fit in very well with uh, the landscape that we're facing at the moment. And there was points where we'd finished the film, we saw the end product, and we just wanted Boris to hold on a bit longer so that the film would come out. But I, th I think it still holds uh, what we intended it to, and, you know, it kind of reveals what we all know the Tories are like. That, that's the kind of, yeah. Well, there's always a scandal around the corner anyway. This will be relevant probably 10 years, 20 years, 30 yeah, years yeah, time. Yeah. So how do you go about channeling that kind of character? Um, well, obviously, he's very arrogant. Uh, I mean, th these people are, are amazing, aren't they? How they can, uh, the resilience, and f they just keep bouncing back, and it doesn't matter what. Uh, I mean, uh, you look at the stuff from Dominic Raab, but from way back saying that human rights, he doesn't believe in them, and social care, and, you know, helping the handicap. I mean, shocking stuff that was, you know, given as some kind of way of selling themselves. So uh, there's plenty of sources to, to sort of um, dig in from, and uh, it wasn't that hard to come up with a... I mean, I don't think he's charming, but, you know, I mean, there is a, a bit of charm there, but um, someone who has no kind of... Um, I don't know what the word is, uh, where they're, they, they're just not embarrassed at all, and they, they get up and they... You know, you see what happens to him in the end. He, he gets in, and, uh, yeah. Do, do you think he's one of those characters that you really want to hate him, but maybe by the end of it you actually kind of like him? I think because of what he gets away with, and that's also the parallel, is that getting away with it seems... We, we, we tend to, to root for the person who gets away with it. Um, I think that's fine if you're, you know, a Robin Hood character, but when you're representing the nation, I don't, I don't know... That, but, yeah, I think we do, we do kind of root for him in a way, yeah. Because of his guile and his, um, you know, he's, he's so... His fortitude, he's, uh, he, he, there's nothing phases him, he gets on with it. Mm. Maybe we quite like someone who can be cunning and get away with it, because in a way, when you watch these sort of things, it channels their own dark side, doesn't it, really? Uh, yeah, I think that's exactly right. And we all like getting away with stuff, don't we? Um, and what, what's that about? I, th I don't know. Um, that's an interesting philosophical one that I haven't really thought about. But, I mean, whether you're a little pickpocket, you get a little buzz out of it, don't you? until you sort of look at yourself in the mirror and then... So I, I don't know how to, <laughs> to finish that one, though. I guess movies were kind of intrinsically good, but when they watch dark stuff, it kind of... You can live out these fantasies in a safe way. In a safer way, yeah. And there is a little fantasy piece in this, which, were, you know, was a, was a nice surprise. Um, and it is just the fact that he goes for it, and uh, I think we do. We do enjoy watching someone else come up trumps when they take a risk or, or get away with it, yeah. Is it nice to have British comedies back? And you know, it hasn't been a real fun British comedy with a bit of that dark humour that we all quite like. It hasn't been anything like that for a while, has it? For a long time. Um, I mean, there's been quite a formulaic or the sort of upper echelons of British cinema who do their, their comedies and we know who they are. 
um, but not since Shallow Grave or I, I can't think of a time, you know, it's, it's been a good 20 years since. And, and, and it's very, I think it's a really tight film. I think uh, we, we buy everything, nothing's forced. And given the 13 days we had to shoot it, I think we've done a really good job. 13 days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that must be quite a challenge. I thought you'd have spent much longer on something well, like this. No, no, we were very lucky with, um, with our DP, um, Schaffer, um, and uh, it was a real, uh, everyone, you know, getting together and doing what they could to make it the best thing we, we, we could, from the actors to the set design to the art, art department. Uh, everyone pulled it together and uh, we came up with something, you know, we're really proud of. Well, I can't wait to see. I think it's about to start quite shortly, actually. So I better let you get on and, and find your place. Thank you so much for chatting to me and best of luck with it all. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a return of the good old British dark humour. If you're looking for a bit of respite, a little bit of an antidote to the dark times in the world and maybe a way to get out your inner frustrations, then maybe this is a film for you. And remember, if you want to catch more premieres and more content from us here at the Fan Club, remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I've been Corinna Jane and see you soon. Who the fuck is that? Uh, <laughs> oh, good fucking move! Mallorca, with the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels. It's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.